What if I told you that almost everything you eat, grains, fruits, vegetables, even some processed foods, has been doused in a chemical linked to serious health risks? That chemical is glyphosate, and it's virtually sprayed on all our crops. Glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup, was originally introduced as an herbicide in the 1970s. Fast forward to today, and it's the most widely used weed killer in the world. But here's the catch. Glyphosate wasn't always in our food system, and many experts believe that our health was much better before its widespread use. In today's video, we're exposing the dangers of glyphosate, how it's infiltrated our food supply, and why some researchers believe it may even be linked to gluten intolerance. Stick around, because what you learn today could change the way you see modern agriculture forever. Let's get into it. For decades, glyphosate has been marketed as a safe and effective herbicide. But recent research paints a much darker picture. A study published in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health found that glyphosate exposure is associated with an increased risk of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, a type of blood cancer. In fact, in 2015, the World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, classified glyphosate as a probable human carcinogen. So, how did we get here? Before the widespread adoption of glyphosate, traditional farming relied on crop rotation, natural composting, and manual weeding. But once genetically modified crops, GMOs, were introduced in the 1990s, glyphosate use skyrocketed. These GMO crops were engineered to withstand heavy doses of glyphosate, allowing farmers to spray entire fields without killing the crops. The result? Massive glyphosate contamination in our food supply. Glyphosate and our health. One of the biggest concerns surrounding glyphosate is its impact on gut health. A study published in Environmental Health found that glyphosate disrupts the gut microbiome, killing beneficial bacteria and allowing harmful pathogens to thrive. Since our gut health is directly linked to immune function, mood regulation, and digestion, this disruption can have widespread consequences. Even more concerning is glyphosate's potential role in gluten intolerance and celiac disease. A groundbreaking study published in Interdisciplinary Toxicology suggests that glyphosate exposure could be a key driver of gluten sensitivity. The researchers found that glyphosate inhibits enzymes needed to properly break down gluten, leading to inflammation and increased gut permeability, commonly known as leaky gut. This might explain why gluten intolerance and celiac disease have skyrocketed in recent decades, coinciding with the rise in glyphosate use. But the dangers don't stop there. Glyphosate has also been linked to hormonal disruption. A study in toxicology reports found that glyphosate acts as an endocrine disruptor, interfering with the body's natural hormone balance. This disruption can contribute to reproductive issues, thyroid dysfunction, and even developmental problems in children. Glyphosate in your food. If you think avoiding glyphosate is as simple as skipping GMOs, think again. Even non-GMO crops are contaminated through a process called desiccation. Farmers spray glyphosate on wheat, oats, and other grains just before harvest to dry them out faster. This means that even foods labeled as natural or non-GMO can still be loaded with glyphosate residue. Independent testing by the Environmental Working Group, EWG, found alarming levels of glyphosate in everyday foods like breakfast cereals, granola bars, and even baby food. A report from the Detox Project revealed that some of the highest levels were found in oat-based products like instant oatmeal and whole wheat bread. Even organic foods aren't completely safe. While organic farmers aren't allowed to use glyphosate directly, contamination can still occur through water runoff, soil residue, and cross-contamination from neighboring farms. Glyphosate and Soil Health Beyond human health risks, glyphosate is also harming the environment, particularly soil health. A study published in Frontiers in Environmental Science found that glyphosate depletes essential soil microbes, reducing biodiversity and soil fertility over time. Healthy soil is crucial for nutrient-dense crops, and when glyphosate wipes out beneficial bacteria, it leads to weaker plants that require even more chemical intervention to grow. This creates a vicious cycle. 
farmers use glyphosate to control weeds, but in the process, they degrade their own soil, making it harder to grow food naturally. As a result, we're seeing an increase in the use of synthetic fertilizers and pesticides, further contaminating our food supply and water systems. Glyphosate in drinking water. It's not just our food that's at risk. Glyphosate has also been found in our water supply. A 2019 study in environmental science and technology discovered that glyphosate runoff from agricultural fields contaminates lakes, rivers, and even municipal drinking water. Because glyphosate is water-soluble, it easily spreads through groundwater, making it nearly impossible to avoid. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, glyphosate has been detected in over 60% of surface water samples tested in agricultural regions. This widespread contamination raises serious concerns about long-term exposure, as even low levels of glyphosate in drinking water have been linked to liver and kidney toxicity. The Connection between glyphosate and chronic disease. Over the past few decades, the rise in chronic illnesses has mirrored the increase in glyphosate use. Conditions such as autoimmune diseases, food allergies, and neurological disorders have become far more common, and some researchers believe glyphosate may be a contributing factor. A study published in scientific reports found that glyphosate exposure affects mitochondrial function, leading to increased oxidative stress and inflammation. Since chronic inflammation is a root cause of many modern diseases, including cancer, diabetes, and heart disease, this raises serious concerns about our long-term exposure to glyphosate. Additionally, glyphosate has been found to disrupt neurotransmitter function. Research in neurotoxicology suggests that glyphosate exposure may interfere with serotonin and dopamine pathways, potentially contributing to anxiety, depression, and neurodevelopmental disorders like autism. The dangers of glyphosate extend far beyond just food and water contamination. One of the most alarming issues is its link to antibiotic resistance. Glyphosate was originally patented as an antimicrobial agent, meaning it doesn't just kill weeds, it can also harm beneficial bacteria in our bodies. A study in MBIO, a journal of the American Society for Microbiology, found that exposure to glyphosate can make certain pathogenic bacteria, such as E. coli and Salmonella, more resistant to antibiotics. This is a major public health concern. With antibiotic-resistant infections already on the rise, the widespread use of glyphosate in our food system may be accelerating the problem. When we consume foods contaminated with glyphosate, we may unknowingly be weakening our ability to fight off infections, making common illnesses harder to treat. Glyphosate's Impact on Fertility and Pregnancy Another growing area of concern is glyphosate's effect on reproductive health. Studies suggest that glyphosate exposure may contribute to fertility issues and pregnancy complications. Research published in Reproductive Toxicology found that glyphosate exposure in animal models led to decreased sperm quality, hormonal imbalances, and reduced reproductive success. For pregnant women, the risks are just as concerning. A study in environmental health perspectives found that women with higher glyphosate levels in their system were more likely to experience shorter pregnancies, which can lead to low birth weight and developmental problems in newborns. The study also raised concerns about glyphosate crossing the placenta, potentially exposing the developing fetus to toxic effects. With more and more people struggling with infertility and pregnancy-related health issues, could glyphosate be playing a hidden role? While more research is needed, the existing data suggests that avoiding glyphosate-contaminated foods may be a wise choice for those trying to conceive or expecting a child. The Legal Battle Against Glyphosate Despite mounting evidence of its dangers, glyphosate continues to be widely used, largely due to aggressive lobbying from agrochemical giants like Monsanto, now owned by Bayer. In recent years, however, lawsuits against Bayer have been piling up. In 2018, a landmark case resulted in a $289 million verdict against Monsanto after a jury determined that glyphosate exposure contributed to a school groundskeeper's terminal cancer. Since then, thousands of lawsuits have been filed, with plaintiffs claiming that Roundup exposure caused their non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. As of 2023, Bayer has paid over $10 billion in settlements, but the company still insists that glyphosate is safe. 
regulatory agencies worldwide are divided on the issue. While the European Union has taken steps to restrict glyphosate use, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, continues to defend its safety despite independent studies suggesting otherwise. This ongoing battle highlights the powerful influence of the agrochemical industry and raises questions about how much we can trust regulatory bodies to protect public health. Can you avoid glyphosate? With glyphosate so deeply embedded in our food system, is it even possible to avoid it? While complete avoidance may be difficult, there are several steps you can take to minimize exposure. Choose organic. Whenever possible, Organic farming prohibits the use of glyphosate, so organic produce, grains, and legumes are less likely to contain residues. A study from environmental research found that switching to an organic diet for just six days reduced glyphosate levels in urine by 70%. Avoid processed foods. Many packaged and processed foods contain ingredients derived from glyphosate-sprayed crops, such as wheat, corn, and soy. Sticking to whole, minimally processed foods can significantly reduce exposure. Look for glyphosate-free labels. Some brands have begun testing their products for glyphosate and labeling them as glyphosate-free. Organizations like the Detox Project certify certain foods as free from glyphosate contamination. Wash and peel produce. While washing fruits and vegetables won't completely eliminate glyphosate, it can help reduce surface residues. Peeling produce, especially conventionally grown root vegetables, can also help. Support regenerative farming. Regenerative and biodynamic farms use alternative weed management techniques that don't rely on synthetic herbicides. Supporting these farms helps promote a healthier food system. The future of glyphosate. As more research emerges and public awareness grows, the future of glyphosate remains uncertain. Some countries, such as Germany, Mexico, and Thailand, have taken steps to phase out or ban glyphosate entirely. In the U.S., however, regulatory agencies continue to allow its widespread use. Public pressure may be the key to change. As consumers demand cleaner food and push for stricter regulations, companies and policymakers may be forced to reconsider their stance on glyphosate. Until then, staying informed and making conscious choices about what we eat is our best defense. So, if glyphosate wasn't always in our food system, why are we suddenly so dependent on it? The truth is, we're not. We've just been led to believe that industrial farming can't function without it. But the rise in chronic diseases, gut health issues, and environmental destruction suggests that the cost of using glyphosate far outweighs its benefits. By choosing organic, supporting regenerative agriculture, and demanding greater transparency, we can take back control of our food system and protect our health. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more health-conscious content. Have you taken steps to avoid glyphosate? Let us know in the comments below.